Uh, bef before we get started, I want to do some inter introductions. And, and Maria, I want to start with you. Tell us uh, where you're joining us from, what you're racing on Sunday, and, and what your goal is. Hi. Um, feel free to call me Mimi. I live right outside of Atlanta here in Peachtree Corners. Uh, I teach high school band at Norcross High School. Um, and I'm doing the 5K on Saturday and then the half on Sunday. Last, last year was my first half marathon doing the Publix. So I'm super excited that we get to still do that this year. What's your instrument of choice? I was a percussionist. You look like a percussionist. <laughs> um, I'm a I'm a flute player. I I would say you look like a flutist or flautist, but I, I definitely know. usually I make people guess. I'm like, <laughs> punishment doesn't look like I play, and it's like they usually get it right on the money. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll wait for April to re to rejoin. Um, <laughs> I, I want to start by asking you a question, Molly, three days away from a half marathon, which you have said you're going to check, check notes, full send. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you, what do you, and your hat, I think says it too, if I. If yeah, I'm the hat that my boyfriend made for me. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I just recently learned what that means because I'm old. Um, <laughs> it's a skier you, thing. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, it is? Okay. I'm not a skier, so I feel better about it. Um, what, what are you, I mean, what are you doing on the Thursday night before a half marathon? How are you preparing? What's your routine look like? Um, my, well, my Thursday night is actually going to be flying in. I think we probably get in around like 10 30 or 11. Um, or uh, sorry, tomorrow, though, this today's Thursday. today's <laughs> Thursday. Oh my God. I, basically I just finished up my run. I'm up here in Flagstaff. Um, I uh, pretty much just easy runs today. I'm packing up. I'm trying to put my legs up a little bit and, and get ready, get a little bit of life back in my body um, after a bunch of hard altitude training. But yeah, pretty much a normal easy day. And then we'll we'll go very easy the next two days. For, for, for people who uh, have not uh, made Olympic teams here, uh, which is all but two of us, uh, what's an easy day mean for you? How many, how many miles, what pace are you running at when you do an easy day? Um, an easy day for me is usually 10 to 12 in the morning and four to six at night. So I did, um, we, I did a fun little social run this morning. Um, we have bagel run up here in Flagstaff that meets at Biff's Bagels every Thursday at eight. And then, um, I just ran from the house in the afternoon. So it's nice taking advantage of the good weather. Well, I'd love Maria ask a question or actually I want to set you up with a question and then I'll let you ask one, but you're doing the 5k half marathon double Molly. Have you ever done that? And if so, okay, if you were doing that, if you're racing a 5K on a Saturday night and a half marathon on a Sunday, how would you approach that? Ooh, um, oh, is this for me or is this for Maria? <laughs> I want you to give Maria your best advice on how you would, how you would recover in between those two hard efforts. Okay, so I've had back-to-back -back racing. They've, only, they've just been shorter races. So I've done like back-to-back -back like 3K, 5Ks. But the, the 5K half, that's definitely, um, that's definitely something I, I've never done. I think probably making sure that you're keeping your legs up. I always like to put my feet up against the wall and um, just try and flush out my legs a bit, making sure you're getting a really good dinner after the 5K and getting to bed nice and early because it's obviously going to be a, a very early start for the half. But I think if you're making sure you're getting off your feet, I know it's hard, like not wanting to like go, go hang around and see everything. Um, I guess you're from around there though. So not much to sightsee, but um, yeah, I would say just making sure you're recovering as well as possible. So you can get life back in your legs for the half. When's your starting wave Maria on Sunday morning? It's, it's not till nine 30. Okay. So you got a decent turnaround. Um, <laughs> my boyfriend and I are both doing both of them, the 5k and the half. <laughs> and we are, um, super early morning people so we wake up at like 4 a.m every day so oh my God. Um, i think our 5k time is like 5 30 so once that i was like you know half an hour later you get some food we're probably asleep by like eight <laughs> i'm sorry we've kept you up tonight <laughs> <laughs> this is the latest we've been up this <laughs> week full marathon what, what advice would you give to maria for that turnaround I'll go first or me? You go for it. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of band training participants doing it as well. Um, some of them are actually staying there so they don't have to do the drive. 
um, the staying down by the racetrack. I think this year it's going to be a little different because it's going to be pretty warm. I think warmer than it's been in Atlanta. Um, so we're talking to people about hydrating a little bit more, using more electrolytes maybe than they've, they've used to because um, it's been a little cold lately. So people haven't quite used as much as they've. So we've talked about adding, you know, salt tabs. We've talked about doing um, hydrating starting now and, and just about eating like after you race the 5k, you're probably going to be really hungry, but you want to be careful and eat foods that are really easily digestible. You want to stay away from like a lot of, a lot of fiber foods, a lot of really fatty foods so that your stomach is, you know, it's pretty good for the race. Anything else I missed, huh? That was good. <laughs> I'm going to take another swing at April. Where are you from? What you're racing on Sunday and what your, what your goal is? Okay, so, okay, and I think things are working now. Um, so I'm from Thomaston, Georgia, and did it go mute again? No, and um, I'm running the full on Sunday. No, <laughs> I don't know, it's not working. We hear you loud and it clear, you okay. are, yes. Oh, okay, okay, so uh, anyways, sorry y'all, I'm not good at technology. I'm running the full and I'm just gonna try to get four and a half hours um, I ran a full last month and I got like 431. So it's about, that's pretty good for me, I think. So Molly, you've run a couple of marathons. Uh, one of them uh, put you on the Olympic team and the second one was a pretty big PR. Uh, what advice, it's race week. What what can a marathoner do three days out uh, to make this better? Or more importantly, what can they do to make it worse? What are the, what are the things that a marathoner should be doing right now? I feel like for me, the biggest thing is sleep, um, leading into a race just because I never sleep well the night before a race. And so making sure that I'm really getting really good sleep two or three nights and two nights before the race, um, I feel like is the biggest thing just so you, that your body's recovering and try not to be on your feet too much. Um, but I, I actually have never really like carbo loaded for a race. So that's something that I've got to experiment with. I, see, I'm, I'm still so inexperienced with the marathon. I feel like Sometimes I, I need to um, work on stuff, but yeah, making sure that like you're getting in your good routine and kind of lowering your stress as much as possible. But it seems like you're kind of an old pro at this April that you've done a couple. So I think you probably, uh, you probably know your routine going into races. Yeah, I don't really, I don't know. Um, carb or carb load either. Um, you know, a lot of people do and um, swear by it but I'm kind of like you I just tend to eat normally but that's good advice about the sleep um, I haven't thought about that before so thanks for that coaches, uh, thanks for sharing that <laughs> coaches what are you telling the in-training participants right now as they as they are three days out from their marathon well they did was they third oh, well yesterday was kind of their last workout that they did so the next couple of days are just you know just really easy um the thing I had to get out of the participants' mind was they all thought that the day before they should do absolutely nothing, um, which I told them that that's always worse. So now they at least do something easy, at least at least 10 minutes or so, because they all thought they shouldn't do anything. Uh, so at least moving around 10 minutes or up to you know three miles, just easy to keep the body moving, especially if you're going to be driving or traveling, or if you've been sitting all day working, you know, all week, it's good to get up and move. Um, so that's the biggest thing that we have to tell them. And um, and reminding them about eating, you know, don't, don't go out to eat at a new place the night before is what I always have to remind them as well. Um, if they haven't tried anything, so. <laughs> Amy, that's actually been... really funny. Um, right before Atlanta last year, my mom was like shocked that I went out for a six mile run the day before. And she was like terrified for me. I'm like, no mom, don't worry. This is, I'm supposed to be doing this. <laughs> oh, they look at you like, they're so shocked. They're like, wait, you want me to run the day before? I'm like, Yes, I really do. I want you to I want you to go run. It's so it's so foreign to them. It, it was really funny. But Molly, we had we had an athlete that, you know, we have kind of a eating pattern and one of our athletes did not do so well in one of the marathons. And he's like, can I just go back? And he went back to this old school like eating yeah. pattern before the marathon that we were like, that's we didn't think it was gonna work, but it works for him. So whatever works for you, I would uh find it, stick with it and, and go with it. I've done sushi before every marathon, every marathon I've ever run. Sushi okay. and a beer. Sushi is really good pre-race. I yeah. love having sushi pre-race. Because you've got the protein. 
from the fish and you have the, the carbs from the rice. It's the perfect combination. Yeah. I've never run a good marathon, it's worth pointing out. <laughs> but, but I have had it before everyone. Um, I wanna give Maria and April a chance to ask Molly and the coaches a question since uh, this is about your race. So, so Maria, what questions do you have? What are you, what are you wondering as you approach your race this weekend? I mean, we're, kind of, we're kind of talking about, added a little about like keeping, like keeping your diet fairly normal or is, um, do you, I mean, maybe not carbo load, but the few days before, are you thinking about eating just a little bit more fuel? Um, and then the amount of like, like how much more water are you drinking per day? And then at what point is it like, don't try to drink too much water because then you'll have to um, use the bathroom while you're, um, while you're in the race. Um, yeah, so I think before all my marathons, I try to do a good job of like making sure that I'm like, hydrating enough, but yeah, not like forcing water down. Like I like putting a little bit of like electrolyte in my water. So it makes it a little bit easier to go down. But if you're like feeling physically ill from the amount of water you're drinking, that's probably too much. Um, I usually say like, listen to your body. If your body is physically like, no, like I don't need any more. It's probably telling you something important. Um, in terms of food, it's been very different because my leading into Atlanta, I could kind of do everything exactly as I needed to. Um, really like nailing it down. And then before London, it was, we were really dictated by how we were in the bubble. So like, I actually really couldn't get, uh, it was just very like all over the place. Um, and just trying to keep things like not eating too much fiber the week before, um, not like overloading the, like more than I had been eating. I'd already been eating a ton because I was training so much. And so kind of just keeping it consistent, even though I wasn't training quite as much because I was tapering, but not like restricting, obviously. Um, and I think, yeah, a big part of it is that like, even if it isn't perfect going into the marathon, it's going to be okay. Like, I think a lot of people get wrapped up in this idea, like, oh my gosh, if I didn't eat my specific pasta two nights before the race, the entire thing's out the window. And it's like, no, like, it's going to be okay. You can roll with it. Your body's pretty resilient. As long as like, as long as it's good enough, it's going to be good. <laughs> Amy or, or Molly, have either of you ever had a pre-race pre disaster? Like, have you ever done the, just the, the exact wrong thing you're supposed to do as far as going to like, went to a bad restaurant or picked the wrong meal? And, and how did that turn out? The, I had pretty much the most disastrous one I could have. I got food poisoning the night before um, I ran the Stanford 5Ks in college. We went out to like, this is why I don't eat at Cheesecake Factory. I got horrible food poisoning from Cheesecake Factory. Was up the, did not sleep a wink, was throwing up the entire night and I PR'd the next day. So goes to show. Sometimes even the worst situations, you can make the most of it. <laughs> I don't know which one would be. We, we both got food poisoning oh, yeah. before Peachtree one year. We both got it. Um, and Amy got it first. This is, a, this is a long time ago. We're going to date ourselves. 2003. We both were running still. And Amy got food poisoning first. And then I got it second. And she recovered and was able to eat the night before. I had still not eaten in a couple of days. And it was the first time Amy ever beat me in a race legitimately yeah legitimately <laughs> you know but we're just gonna it's okay <laughs> food poisoning and all hey, april i want to give you a chance to to ask your question what what are you what are you wondering uh going into race week um i've kind of always wondered um when you're running a marathon i run a lot of 5ks as well so that's kind of like a to me in my opinion just a sprint you know as long as you can as long as you can hold it for 24, 25 minutes is what I usually do. But um, on a marathon, you know, you always hear go out conservatively. And I feel like when I do that, I'm probably going to be slower at the end anyway. So I end up probably much slower than I would have been. And then when I ran in January, I did about a two hour half and I still was slow toward the end. But I don't know. My question is, I guess, just do you, should you try to be slower than you, you probably could go at the, you know, the first half or should you just really kind of push yourself more? I don't know. Just some opinions on that. Um, Cause when I, I push myself, kinda, I end up faster. Yeah. I think it kind of depends on what you're aiming for in the race. Like if you're, mm -hmm. I think going out slower is definitely a safer bet. Um, and going out fast, you're definitely taking the risk of, um, 
of like maybe not being able to hold that pace. That's kind of like the situation that I'm in going into this half on Sunday where it's like Mm -hmm. the pace that we're going out, it would be a big PR for me and it's a pretty aggressive pace, but kind of having to be okay with like, okay, like I'm going to commit to this. And even if it, even if I can't hold that, like I'm okay with the consequences. So it's kind of cost benefit of like, I think everyone would tell you like, oh, go out slow, go conservative. And so like, if you want to be able to have a safer race and know that you're going to be able to finish faster, I'd say go out conservative. That's kind of the situation that I was in going into London where I went out slow and I was able to finish a lot faster, but I wasn't as happy with the overall time. I think Mm -hmm. if you go out fast, you kind of have to like, I tell, I've done this like in workouts and like, I talked to it about it with my coach of like, you make your bed, you got to lay in it. And so if you go out hard, you got to accept the consequences that come with it. But if you take a risk, there might be a bigger reward there as well. So it's kind of just, yeah, weighing out what you feel comfortable doing. Okay. I'm usually slower anyway, around mile 23 or 24. And, and even at that point, we'll kind of walk running for me. So I'm going to do that anyway whether I come out fast or come out slow. So I think that's why when I'm a little faster in the beginning, I tend to have a faster time overall. I would say, especially with the marathon too, though, remembering that like the first three miles or the first five miles, you're going to be feeling great and you're going to want to go fast. So even like, Mm -hmm. even if you are feeling really good, remembering like, okay, there's still a lot of race left to run. I want to listen to my body, but I also want to be smart. Yeah. And okay. I would say this is Makes especially sense. true with this course. I, I, I ran the, I ran the, the half marathon course uh, a couple of weeks ago and it starts, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a slow incline, but it's a, it's a very unnoticeable incline and it's flat enough to really make you feel like you want to get out of the gate fast. So those first four to five miles are tricky uh, because, because they're quick. Uh, so you'll want to, you'll want to hold back a little bit there um, because there are some hills on the back end of the, of the full marathon. Good to know. <laughs> Amy and Andrew, how do you how do you coach in training participants when it comes to pacing in a full? A lot of them, it's their first one. So that's always, it's definitely tricky. Um, for some of them, it's just finishing and, and some of them are at a place where they don't really go much faster in the race than they are in training. Um, some of them, we do get them to a place where they can. Um, it's probably a better question for Andrew on this one, maybe it's what he does with pace, but we do different workouts throughout for our in-training participants. I mean, we have a lot of um, in-training participants anywhere from, you know, 250 up to six hours is what our in-training participants are. So we, we have a really big gamut. And unfortunately, this training season, we didn't get to have very many training programs, you know, in person. So it's, it's going to be a little bit harder to help them with pace this year. Um, but like I said, a lot of them is their first one and we're just helping them get through. Yeah, I, I think for for uh, most runners in the in-training program, you know, the advice is just, it, you know, what time do you want to run? And then don't run a whole lot faster than five seconds a mile faster than that pace. So, cause you will feel better the first half. So if you feel good, mm-hmm. you can go a little bit faster than pace so that you have a little bit of cushion if you do hurt at the end but don't, don't go crazy and do like 30 seconds a mile too fast. Cause that'll, that'll bite you in the butt the second half. Gotcha. With about, with about seven minutes left in our call, Maria, what other questions do you have or what questions does your boyfriend have? Cause he's doing the race with you. He's, he's free to come in and ask a question as well. Do you have any questions? Oh, I love that. He's just sitting right now. <laughs> there he's right. He could have come on that call. <laughs> I wasn't invited. Hi, I'm Dan. Dan. <laughs> I've been listening in, you know, creepily on the side here. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm running the, the 5K okay. and then the, the half on Sunday. So very excited. Um, I don't often have a chance to ask an Olympic runner a uh, question. So I guess uh, what in- would be interesting for me to know would be, are you like for the, however long you're spending in the race, where are you at mentally? Are you constantly thinking strategically through the race? Are you checking in with your body, uh, playing fun mind games? Um, I find myself lying to myself like, oh, I only have five miles left when I really only have three miles left, things like that. Like what, where is your head at during the race? (laughs) 
Yeah, I feel like, especially for some of these longer races, that was the biggest thing that I had to learn because when I did 5Ks and 10Ks, it's so fast and it's so quick that you almost like, you don't have to think about what you're going to think about. Um, and with the marathon, I find the biggest thing is like trying to control some of those thoughts or almost like, I felt like during uh, Atlanta last year, I was able to really get in just a great like flow state almost of just like letting the race come to me and thinking about what was like being in the moment and appreciating that. But I'm not going to lie that I definitely like, I'll have like songs that I get stuck in my head and repeat over and over. Um, I'll like pick out certain things on the course or even just focusing like on certain landmarks. Like if I'm really hurting, just like, okay, get to that landmark, get to them, that landmark. Um, I hate to admit how much I have lied to myself in the race of like, oh no, you're like not trying to look at my watch and pay attention to splits if I'm going very fast and just being like, no, nope, you're just going like, we're not going to freak out by looking at how fast we're going or thinking of how many more miles we have to go. I think anything that can keep you in touch with yourself and not thinking about some of these external factors of, oh, this guy is passing me or, oh, I'm feeling so tired already. Just trying to stay in the moment and focusing on what you need to do, I think is the biggest thing. April, any other questions from you on, on, on the marathon distance? Yes, uh, my friend is over here too, and he runs the marathon with me a lot of times. Oh, he wants to see you. Put on Bring a shirt. <laughs> He's putting on a shirt. <laughs> I gotta find somebody now. Like, where's my wife? <laughs> He's putting on a shirt now. He was um, playing with a dog on the bed. <laughs> and now I need to like bring the cat in. So I, yeah. I <laughs> he wanted to ask though about. Um, well, I'll let you come over so you can hear the answer, but he was wondering about how to eat or, or fuel during the race. Cause I know a lot of times when we run long distance at home. We don't, we don't really eat anything, you know, so it's kind of different here. Put this headphone in your ear. You can use my left one. Here he comes. His name is Winston. <laughs> Hi, Winston. <laughs> Hi, Winston. Hi. So as you were asking about. Uh, so we were just wondering, uh, what's the best strategy as far as fueling during the race? Because uh, my, my strategy usually is I, I try to go out as long as I can without really, you know, get, um, getting water or doing that. Because I think once I start doing it, it kind of almost becomes a habit with me. And then that's what I start to kind of uh, mentally go towards stopping at each stop and, and getting something to eat. And I, I think it kind of throws off a little bit of my rhythm. So what, how do you feel about that? Um, I actually, in terms of fueling, I find that more early, like getting in more as early as I can is instrumental. That was the biggest thing. When I started doing marathons, I was like, no, I'm tough. I don't need to eat anything. I don't need to drink anything. I've done 20 mile long runs without anything. And then I found I just had so much more strength and my body was so much more well prepared for the latter stages of the race when I was getting stuff in. So now I actually aim. So I try to get in 40 to 50 grams of carbs every hour, and I'm splitting that up by taking a bottle every four, three or four miles. So at every 5K mark or every four mile, um, just depending. But yeah, especially taking it early, like having to take a bottle at 5K in, like your body doesn't really want it at that point, but just like almost just like stuffing it down. Um, and then I find that because... I actually bonked really hard in Atlanta um, when I ran there last year because I wasn't getting in enough because I'd never done marathon fueling before. And then when I finally figured it out for London, I was like, I negative splitted, like I've never negative splitted a race before. I are like, or just like in, in terms of like feeling so much stronger and finishing feeling like I had a lot left in the tank because I had been taking that nutrition. So I, it was something that I had to get over though. I'm like, no, I'm tough. I don't need to take anything early. And it's like, oh no, this will actually help you. Okay. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. that's kind of the opposite of the way I, I'm, I'm like you. That's exactly the way I do. I try to go out 20 miles. And I've done, you can ask her, I've, I've done mm -hmm. about 21 miles without drinking or anything like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, but then, yeah, usually about mile 22, I really start to feel bad. Um, mm -hmm. And then as far as that goes, uh, what, what is your strategy as far as what you're, what you're taking? Uh, so I take Morton. Um, I found it's the only thing that I can take without throwing up truthfully. Um, I have friends that take goose and just other sorts of like carbohydrate gels or like energy drinks, but Morton has been the best thing for me by far. And, and you say Morton, is that, what is that? 
Yeah. Um, Lauren, it's like a hydro gel. So it's, it's pretty, mm. uh, it's basically just sweet. It doesn't have a flavor other than sugar. Mm. Um, and so it's super neutral, super easy on my stomach, but it's called M A U T R M A U R T E N more 10. Um, mm. and yeah, it's great. You just mix it in a bottle. Um, easy way to get carbs. Usually I mix, um, the 320 mix in one 17 ounce bottle. And then I split that into three. And, and you can get that product. You're carrying book. You can get it in a gel as well. Martin comes in a, a gel. Um, so if you don't have, because uh, elites get bottles, special bottles, but if you don't carry a bottle, you can always, like we have our athletes, um, right. they'll tuck it in their sports bra or if they have a short pocket, you can put a gel or two in there and then you can take it that way too. Yeah, sorry. I Yeah, I was just kind of like assuming okay. bottles, but yeah, carrying the gels. Secret trick too, taking a caffeinated gel at like mile 18 rocket fuel it just keeps me so much more mentally focused taking caffeine late in the race not even just for like body energy it's just like keeping yourself focused because that's when my mind starts to drift the thing that you need to keep in mind is so for example elite skip bottles but you know with the in training participants they have to be able to carry most of their own stuff or they have to use the water or the power rate on the course the thing that i have to uh, caution people is so for example if you do decide to take stuff right and let's say you take uh, a gel with you don't take a gel and power rate at the same time when you take one of those um, fueling sources you should take it with water because too much carbohydrate at the same time and also look at the packaging like martin is one serving but if you buy let's say cliff gels or if you buy the the oh the cubes right that's actually two servings so you don't want to take all of it at once you have to kind of look and see how it's packaged um, and you'll mm. find some, like there's pouches that you can wear. You can like, like we talked about the women, it's easy. Tuck it in our sports bra, right? For the guys, it gets a little bit harder. So they have some handhelds that you can, that you can buy. They have different pockets. They have um, the fueling belts. You can make your own bottles and take those throughout the course as well. And Publix is a little bit different. We're just going to have bottled water and bottled Powerade that you can either refill or take on the go. So it's going to be a little bit different. Normally in Publix, there's, all sorts of different fun stations and hopefully we'll get back to that. Um, but it's really about practicing. So whatever you do this weekend, just be really careful since you haven't practiced it. Um, I might go something really light and easy, maybe just the power rate, but starting early and see how that sits on your stomach. We do have porta potties out there because sometimes when you try things new, it doesn't always go well. So just be careful. But for your next <laughs> one, I say start early. It takes a while to get your gut used to it. You have to really practice and get your gut used to it. Uh, to trying it yeah yeah totally seconding what amy said the the practicing i'm i'm sorry i didn't mention that earlier but it's something that i had to really get used to um of like my teaching my body to accept carbohydrates while i was training and, and racing well i want to be already mindful of everyone's time and i know we're a little bit over here um uh, thanks everyone for coming out for spending the time with us tonight thank you molly and amy and andrew for joining us before we go, before we let everyone go, our, our, our four participants that came tonight, um, which is an awesome, awesome surprise. Molly, any last words of, of pump up or inspiration for, for these uh, runners on Sunday? Um, yeah, just like it's so exciting to be having a race. I think for a lot of people, this will probably be the first race in a while. And like, just like enjoying the experience, realizing like, yep, a race is hard, but like, we're so lucky that we get to do this and get to go out and have fun and appreciating that I think is the biggest thing. Like, I feel like my races go best when I approach it with a sense of gratitude and just being like, man, like I'm freaking pumped to get a race right now. And like, yeah, I wish you guys the best. I like best of luck um, for the five K's, the halves, the fulls this weekend, you guys are going to do great and just have fun with it. Awesome. Thanks Molly. Thanks Maria, April. We'll see you on Thanks. Sunday. And Saturday. All right.